Some 300 million African youth will require jobs in the next 15 years, what he called the principal challenge facing African policymakers today. Job creation will be linked to stability. Uh, the more we create jobs for these 300 million who are already there, the more we'll stabilize the continent. So this issue has repercussions in terms, first of all, in terms of governance systems, because I don't think we'll be able to govern our countries as before. Uh, we'll need a stronger implication of the youth because they are the majority of the population. 75% of Africa's youth is under the age of 25, with between 250 and 300,000 coming onto the employment market annually for a median-sized African country with a population of 25 million. Structural transformation, I mean the structural change of our economy, we need to take into account that the huge bulk of population, young, uh, uh, that is in, uh, who they are in rural areas, in order to think about transformation. So the structural transformation will need to be based on rural transformation, which leads to industrialization, uh, in order for us to build a manufacturing uh, capacity. He pointed to the importance of science and technology innovation that could leapfrog other regions and the significance of leadership willing to implement policies towards the continent's Agenda 2063. But in Agenda 2063, the most important issue will be the leadership issue. We need leaders who understand to think long term, who understand to think bottom up, who understand to create the necessary jobs, who understand that the solutions we'll need to provide in terms of infrastructure, will need to be regional solutions. At the average age of a president in Africa is 70. Pressed on Africa's aging leadership as an impediment to innovative thinking, with the average age in 2015 reportedly above 78 years old. With President Obasanjo, President Konare, President Beki, they invited me last year in Pretoria. Uh, to talk about, well, the chair of the African Union Commission asked me to talk to them on Agenda 2063. And it's one of the things I told them. They, they asked, where, how can we be useful as former heads of states? I told them, in the next 10 years, mathematically, 95% of the leadership of a continent will no, will no longer be in place. So your task as former heads of state, is to help build that emerging leadership that will really uh, 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 trigger the change we want in Agenda 2063. So this is my honest response. Dr. Miyaki also addressed the question of African insecurity as an impediment to the continent's industrialization and social and economic transformation. But he was quick to point out that only 5% of Africans today find themselves in war zones and lauded the AU Commission's quick response to emerging conflicts. Sherman Bryceby's SABC News, New York.